is on the throne. He's Matthew 25 from verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the, to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore. For ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Beloved, the verse 13 tells us clearly that we do not know the day or the hour that the Lord will come. And this is why I'm sharing this message with you. That you can be locked out. Heaven is real. And hell is real and I need you to understand me that you can be locked out you can be locked out of heaven you can be locked out now this ten virgins represent the church this ten virgins in this story represent the church and I want you to listen to me very carefully but before we can understand the story clearly we need to understand the background to this we will need to understand a little bit about how marriage is contracted in the old Jewish system. There were, there were three stages to the Jewish wedding. The first stage was the engagement. The sec and the engagement was just an agreement between the two parents, the father of the bride and the father of the bridegroom. Just an agreement that, well, I'm going to give my daughter to your son. An agreement that my son is interested in getting married to your daughter. And then the second stage was the betroth betrothal. The betrothal is the stage where mutual promises are made. And this is a ceremony that is made. And then the third stage was the marriage itself. And this is approximately one year later when the bridegroom would come at an unexpected time and come for his bride. And this is a story telling us about ten virgins. Five of them, scripture says, are wise. And five of them, scripture says, were foolish. Now, I'll come to that. With their role, okay of the ten virgins the reason why they needed to keep the alarms lit and needed to have extra oil in case the bridegroom delayed was because they had the duty to lead the bridegroom to find his bride it was going to come in the night and they needed the ten virgins with light to be able to guide him or lead him to the bride and the church has this ultimate responsibility to be able to lead the bridegroom to his bride and I want you to know that as individual believers it's important for us to keep 
our light burning. It's important to keep the oil of the Holy Ghost refreshed and fresh in us because we have the responsibility of leading the bridegroom to find his bride, which is the church. That is why I would want to tell you in this first part of my series that you are supposed to be the pointer to the bride for the bridegroom. And because you are supposed to be the pointer, it is important you understand the story. Because the number 10, the number 10 stands for divine order, a complete cycle, blessing. The church stands for a blessing. We must become a blessing. Now, the number five is the number of grace. And I need you to understand that when it comes to grace, you can be foolish and still be under grace. And you can be wise and be under grace. Grace does not take your foolishness away and grace does not take your wisdom away. So you can be wise under grace and you can be foolish under grace. That is why we are told about five that were foolish and five that were wise. So I need you to understand as we build that into what I'm, I want to really share with you that don't be deceived by grace. The message of grace has been misconstrued by a lot of people in the church. Grace does not change who you are. Grace must make you into who you have to be. And I need you to understand this. Now, five of them scripture tells us were foolish and five scripture says were wise. Now, I want to talk about the five foolish ones. If we say foolish, what do we mean? Foolish means that you are thoughtless. There are too many of us in the Christian faith and we are so thoughtless. And if a person is thoughtless, what we're really saying is that a person or their behavior not showing consideration for the needs of other people. When you are so inconsiderate, when you are uncaring, when you are heedless, when you are unmindful of others, when you are insensitive to others, when you are without consideration of possible consequences, this is being foolish. And you can have this attribute and still be under grace. And that is where you can be locked out. This is why Paul said, Shall we continue to sin for grace to abound? God forbid. So you can be under grace and be thoughtless. The other word that explains being foolish is silly. And being silly means having or showing lack of common sense or judgment. No judgment, no common sense. You can be under grace and no common sense in all that you do. That is being foolish. And we see the traits in the five foolish virgins. There was no sense of judgment there. How could you go expecting the bridegroom to come midnight, not knowing the hour the bridegroom would come and you have no extra oil? That is being thoughtless and that is being silly. And that is what is happening in the house of God today. But you are supposed to be a pointer to the bride. You are supposed to be a pointer of righteousness. How can you be thoughtless? You are supposed to be a pointer of holiness and purity. You are supposed to be a pointer to decency and Christian character. How can you be thoughtless? How can you be silly? It is possible under grace. The third thing that defines who a foolish person is, is being careless. And if we talk about careless, we're talking about not giving sufficient attention or thought to avoiding harm or errors, to be inattentive, to be negligent, showing or caused by lack of attention. 
so scripture says five of them were foolish and five of them were wise five were well equipped they were thoughtful they were not silly they were careful they planned their journey they took their time they carried extra oil the other five did not carry anything alone let us understand that it is about character it is about attitude it is about being getting it right with god so in this first part of the series i want you to understand that you can be under grace and be foolish you can be under grace and miss it you can be under grace and give yourself all the excuses and you will be locked out of heaven it is real it happened to them i encourage you seek ye first the kingdom of god and its righteousness and all these other things you're chasing shall be added to you so says the good book the lord bless you the Lord cause his face to shine on you. Till I come your way with the second part of this series. Remember, you must be a pointer to the bride. It calls for being thoughtful. It calls for being careful. It calls for being wise. You are labeled wise when you do this. The Lord bless you.